Health Minister Dr. Aramot Swaledi says the cause of death of the six children in Naledi Soweto is a result of a chemical called organophosphate. Now, organophosphates are chemicals that feature in agricultural products such as herbicides, pesticides, and insecticides. This relates to the incident in Naledi where six children died after consuming snacks from a spaza shop. The incident has resulted in public outrage with local communities accusing foreign-owned spaza shops in townships of selling expired and unsafe food products. But to gain a better understanding of the situation, we are joined by the Deputy Director of Environmental Health at the Department of Health, Belinda uh, Makofola. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, it's good to have you with us on the program. Thanks for having me, Leah. So while we understand from the press briefing yesterday and the update that's been given, there is currently no link between a specific sponsor shop and the organophosphate that killed the six children. Are you able to track the supplier and charge them for illegally selling a banned substance? Good question, Leanne. I don't know if they were able to track the supplier because these products didn't have any batch number, didn't have the manufacturer's details, didn't have expiry date. They're made in a dodgy black market where who God knows where. So it'd be interesting to hear what she's going to say about this. Well, um, currently the, the investigation is still ongoing. I think you would have heard the minister in the briefing yesterday indicate that um, a packet, an empty packet of chips was found in a pocket of one of the children. And subsequently, that packet was um, sent for analysis, and it was found to be negative of the organophosphates that were found um, during the postmortems. And previously to that, also, uh, the city of Jobek environmental practitioners also took uh, samples of chips um, that were found in the the Staza shop in a lady where allegedly the children bought, you know, the chips and. Uh, the analysis also came back um, negative to organophosphates that were found in the bodies. So currently we cannot directly link the, um, the chemical that was found in the, the bodies of the children with, with, the, um, with the starter shops. Okay. However, maybe it's also important to mention that um, a, a team of inspectors were sent out to around 84 touch shops in Naledi to conduct what we call swaps. So they swap surfaces, they swap floors, you know, also on the top of products uh, with, the, with the aim of, of collecting evidence as to whether, you know, these organophosphates are used, you know, within the spa shops to control uh, rodents and insects mm, mm. Uh, in this in these shops, yes. And, and what were the results? Uh, did you find that this, in fact, was in these sponsor shops? Uh, we are still uh, currently awaiting the, the um, analysis uh, from... So, so far, I haven't had anyone answering a simple question. That is, who made these products? Who is the manufacturer? Can these environmental health practitioners who are meant to be giving credit that these people comply with the standards, can they tell us why they would allow products to be on the shelf without batch number, expiry date, manufacturing details, without the labeling, history labeling requirement and what's in the product? I would like to know that. The National Health Laboratory Services we were told that the result will start trickling in this week. So once those um, you know, analysis comes, then we will be able to, after interpreting the result, you know, indicate whether there was indeed you know, traces of organophosphates in the spaza shops. It's taking quite a long time. I mean, I, I, I imagine that you can agree with me that you know, in order to, to test this, this should have been done a while ago, I mean, the, you know, when you speak to experts, they can say that these results can come out within three days, if that, if you go into these sponsor shops and very quickly check and see, I mean, things may have been tampered with, they may have been changed. I mean, if that is the case, 
are you you know are you are you convinced that in fact that that, that you will be able to get these results because it's it's a it's quite a delay yeah we are convinced uh Nian, that we won't be get, uh, getting the results because we are now closely working with the national institute for communicable diseases we're hoping that with their expertise we'll be able to get to the the bottom of this mm -hmm. maybe also to mention that um you know, usually when there is a food poisoning case, uh, what will happen is that the, the health inspectors will go out to uh, investigate, and when investigating, they collect evidence of the food history, what, um, you know, the person could have eaten at what time, and so forth. And um, then the inspectors will then collect the samples of the foodstuffs. So, um, you know, once we get the analysis of the foodstuffs, and to confirm that positively it is not what has caused, you know, the, the, the illness or in this case the deaths, then we'll have to, you know, um, extend the, the investigation to other things as, as we've done with, with, the, with the surface swaps and the, and the floss and trying to collect, you know, whether there is evidence of this, you know, um, organophosphate. In, in I'm sorry for interrupting you, we've got such little time. In terms of, I mean, surely this is not the first time that health inspectors have gone into these sponsor shops and tested for these substances because this seems to be a problem and it seems to be a common practice that it is used. So have you, in past, found that this is present in the sponsor shops? No, we cannot conclusively say that we found this. Um, what we found is the indication of red droppings to indicate that is a, there is a red problem but so she's saying that they found that there is a red problems in those puzzle shops so if there is a red problems is that not a health risk so if your inspector you see a red um, issue that there may be some reds why don't you ask the question I can see you've got rats, their health risk rats. If anybody knows that, they can go to the food and you know spread germs and all of that in your food. So have they not asked how they're managing the rats? Have they called the pet the rats, you know, pets uh, inspectors to help them with that? So what's the question did do they ask when they see this? See. See how incompetent these people are? Are you guys getting your money's worth here with these people? We haven't found um, any evidence as yet, and we are hoping you know this operation um, that we've just done will, 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 will give us an indication as to whether our suspicions are correct. Yeah, okay, so there's no evidence at this point that it has been found before in other sponsor shops, but is it a common practice? Because I mean, when you speak to a lot of people that do live in the townships and do use these things, that this is a common practice that people people use this. It, it, it almost is, looks like a black pepper, um, and it can be mistaken for that, this kind of substance. and. Unfortunately, it is fatal. If, if a human consumes this, it is fatal. So you have found it in their bodies. Where would they have purchased this from? Um... Yes, yes, that's a good question, yeah. Where would they have purchased this one from? This um, agriculture schedule, table force is schedule. And so when we mean schedule, it means that a person who is going to use it must be trained and also, it cannot be found in any normal shops. Um, it has to be bought from the chemist and the chemist must be licensed and the person who buys it must show the, that they're registered to carry and they have training to use it. They have all the skills and knowledge how to use it. It's be like going to buy a medicine at a pharmacy. You know, you have to bring up the script and the pharmacy give you a medicine this is more like the same thing here you go to the chemist you agriculturist you need to produce your licensing before they hand over this so i mean the questioning i like this questioning and she said that they have not seen any indication that these people are using chemicals but the her colleague said that a while ago. Remember the colleague said that the same from the same department.
they said that. And even when the newsroom, um, one of the um, reporter that went to those shop was showing us that there were chemical next to food. So what is she on about? You can see see your people, see the ANC people. These are ANC appointee stuff. See, yeah, they all, you know, appointee, appointed by ANC, appointed by whatever, but they're just not competent. That's my worry, is that they're not competent. Huh? Why? Why are you having people who are so incompetent in your role where you have so much high unemployment? Could be someone, a young person who's very motivated, who can be trying, can do a good job. Why are they, these people, so looking like they're just so lost in their own career? I mean, I don't know. Uh, that's listening in, but I'm getting a bit annoyed with this interview already, getting a bit annoyed. If we say that it's never been found in spas or shops, where do they get it from, the, the, the residents in the area? Yeah, that, that is a good question. And with the, I think maybe to mention that with the operations, um, as people are interviewed as to whether do you have a red problem, yes, what do you use to control the red problem, and they you know, uh, been able to indicate that, no, we buy this in the informal vendors, in the taxi ranks, and when following up those leads, you know, it led to a bigger, you know, wholesalers, you know, that were really found to be uh, selling this stuff. So it, it, I think it, it's, it's also important to mention, as you, you said, Leanne, that uh, this uh, product or these chemicals are, you know, not only used, you know, in the spas or shops as we, suspect but you know the, the 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 households around the areas as well you know we found community community members that have you know admitted to say no we do use this poison and the reason why we go for this one even though we know it's illegal is because it's effective you know uh, yeah. the ones that we are buying legally from the you know the shelves are not doing the work so that 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 is what we've seen that you know households also you know, are using uh, these um, these pesticides, yeah. which is which is a big problem because that's where um, obviously there's 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 a major issue if anyone consumes it. I mean, so many of these have been deemed illegal, um, except for I think it's turbofos. Is that correct? That's the only one at this point that isn't illegal. So the one that was found in the children's body, this is illegal and it should never ever even be in circulation. Is is am I correct in saying that? Uh, no, table force it's it's a registered substance. So it's registered. However, okay. yes, it's a registered substance under the the Fertilizers, Farm Fleets, Agricultural Remedies Act um, of of the Department of Agriculture. So it is a registered substance that is used or is registered for use in agricultural settings. So mm. for controlling so how. I think that's the one that yeah. people are calling for to be made banned because that is 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 as dangerous, unfortunately. Do you think that she understands that the difference between registered and registered? And does she understand the difference between scheduled and unscheduled? Because it's registered and scheduled. Okay, let's listen. But, but we, we can't get into that too much. But I, I want to ask you, because the, the idea is we need to find a source of this. The fact that these are circulating, there is a massive rodent problem. We know this. It's, it, it, it appears to be out of hand. And as you say, you are seeing this wherever you are going, whether it be in the shops, in uh, the residences, on the streets, everywhere. Now, regarding the four people who were arrested for possessing this illegal pesticide and other unregistered products, are they cooperating with the authorities um, to track down the source of, of these illegal and restricted chemicals? Well, currently, the, the, you know, um, we, we've, we've heard from reports from the SAPS that, you know, some of them were released on bail on admission of guilt yeah. um, for selling the pesticides. Um, however, uh, investigations are still underway as to where is their main supplier? They they seem like main suppliers in the Naledi area, but they are definitely.
definitely getting their supplies from a much bigger, you know, fish, if I may use that word. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, that, is, that is definitely ongoing um, that, um, you know, we, we are expecting that, you know, the police will be able to assist us in ensuring that, you know, in collecting evidence and in, in, um, in um, uh, interviewing these this suspects, they are able to, to indicate where they, they, they get their supplies from. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh, the thing is, they should have done this last year. Should have investigated this last year. By now, they should know. They should have. By now, there shouldn't be any table force lying around or, you know, archived. You know, be all over the place. There shouldn't be any of those. So they'd investigated last year. Now they're trying to. to you know, to pretend that they are investigating, they are doing that. Even the idea that there's a lot of rodents. I mean, if there's a lot of rodents, why the environmental health aren't doing anything about it? And most of these rodents are due to the people that live there anyway. It's because they don't clean. They don't clean. Where in South Africa where there's a lot of migrants in there, the place looks like a slump. It stinks and slump. And even the place that used to be beautiful, when you find that there's a lot of migrants in that place that lives in there, that area tends to become a slump. Look at Sunnyside. Sunnyside one example of a slump area. That was beautiful, metropolitan, urban area. It's now a slump. They don't clean. So if you don't clean um, your environment, that is, and you're selling food, there's going to be a lot of rats. It's going to be rats everywhere. So what are they doing about it? Because they're meant to be environmental health, looking at the environment. Yep. That is also their responsibility as well in that area, managing that, making sure people clean, making sure these people don't urinate on the, in the street. Like what Aaron said, Dr. Aaron Matsualedi said, yes, on, in that interview when she was saying people were complaining to him when he was a home affairs that migrants were re urinating on you know in public yeah so all of that is environmental health this is their responsibility see how much the, the cost of this all of this cost the money you're spending trying to address the social issues that are caused by migrants those things are all billions of rands that you're spending on this, trying to deal with it. The problems that they brought in into South Africa, you're spending a lot of billions and billions of rands trying to deal with it. That's a lot of money, South Africans. You are not Mother Teresa. This ANC staff that they've brought in there, you should not be signing for this. This is catastrophe. Mm, catastrophe. All right, we, we unfortunately have to leave it there, and I, and I do hope that we will get an update on this. I, I suppose, is there, a, is there a timeline, very quickly, Belinda, is there a timeline from police that they've given you that they'll be able to give the results of what they found present in these sponsor shops that were tested? Well, well, that uh, operation was done by DOH. As I said, the National Health Laboratory Services indicated that from this okay. week. So we are expecting to get results as soon as this week. Okay, good. We so now let's listening and get an answer about what we mean when we say registered and scheduled. We have a very, very well organized uh, system in South Africa of pesticide manufacturing companies. And for every single pesticide that is manufactured for the agricultural sector in particular, they have to be registered with the Department of Agriculture under Act 36. And that then requires further investigation by the Department of Health and their regulatory system to ensure that these products are well labeled, that there are warning signs on those products as to what to do, what not to do, how to use them, how not to use them, etc., etc. So these things are pretty well organized. And it sounds like not everyone then um, should be able to get their hands on them. And that may suggest that 
potentially there might be lapses in the system if people are able to get their hands on them? Absolutely. There must be a way of uh, supply through to these people in a domestic environment because they are not supposed to be used in a domestic environment. It's like any other toxin, really, that is out there. Uh, you know, petrol, for example. Petrol, if you drink petrol, you're definitely going to get sick and you might even die from that because it was never designed to be used as a beverage. It is used for your car, obviously. So these are the issues that we have to face. These are regulated products that are used in a completely illegal and unregulated manner. Mm. That's the key word there. Regulated product that are used illegal and unregulated manners. When you see it on the shops anywhere in South Africa, would be illegal. Okay? And why are you know are children more susceptible to to, to pesticide toxicity um, and, and other environmental toxicants, for example, than adults? Well, it's simply because of their size. I mean, they are small, they don't have a very strong immune system, and uh, their tissues are still multiplying rapidly, so their uptake of these chemicals is a lot faster. Uh, and of course, their body weight. So most of these chemicals, in fact, all of them, are uh, developed with body weight in mind. So we do say the toxicity of a chemical is so many milligrams or micrograms per kilogram body weight. So you can definitely see that somebody who weighs 12 kilograms is going to have a far more significant effect than somebody who weighs 80 kilograms. And, and that's just the nature of, of what we are, of the human being and what, and what we are composed of. Or body surface area as well. That's another way we use to measure the, the amount of toxicity that it's enough to kill a rodents or something nematodes that those one that you know are used in agriculture or that can be problematic for with security and safety. Really, they're really not something need to be used domestically at all yeah i would like to know that what is the statistics of this poison in south africa i would like the department of health to release to go and look at their data and look at uh, some someone to look into this with i think nicd would be a best bit to look into this and look at how how many people have died due to poisoning in South Africa? Chemical poisoning, where the death is chemical poisoning. And not all of them will have autopsy, I understand that, but let's get the statistics. How many people have died under fictitious, unknown circumstances? When we now know now that a lot of illegal migrants are getting these chemicals into South Africa. So we'd like to know how many statistics the department can provide to us of generally how many people have died where the death certificate says that they've been poisoned. Okay. So, Prof, is there also, um, you know, some specifications as to say those who get their hands on the on these, um, you know, particular pesticides, for example, and are trained in them, are they then told how to store them as well? Absolutely. The trained professionals that are also registered with the Department of Agriculture and are licensed to handle these uh, chemicals. So they are trained, licensed personnel in South Africa that are allowed, as I said, scheduled, that are allowed to carry and to use tebifos and other agricultural pesticides that are very, that we know they're very dangerous. So it'd be illegal to find them being treated anywhere in informal settling anywhere in South Africa. So if you find them, you need to let the police know. Okay? 
And what I've done, actually, illegal migrants, what I heard from one of the environmental professionals being interviewed is that they actually even decant them. They're on label, they're removed from the original packaging because they're illegal anyway. They get them somewhere illegal, some country somewhere, and get them through the border into South Africa, and then they sell them. See? Nothing good can come out of, out of illegal migration. Illegal migration is a big problem for you, South Africa. It is high risk for your health, for national security, for everything. You must also understand and know how to store them, how to transport them, and how to use them on site and under what conditions. So, for example, if you're using a fumigant in the food industry, the food manufacturing industry, large food manufacturing plants, some of these fumigants are very toxic and therefore equipment has to be covered. The room has to be completely evacuated. No workers may be in the room. And then these plants are fumigated for a 24 hour period, for example, by trained professionals. And all of these uh, precautionary measures have to be in place before such a fumigant is allowed to be uh, released into that environment. So we're hearing about, for example, Aldi Cup, we hear about carbon, carbon mates, um, you know, among others. Are there any other dangerous substances that we should be aware of? Well, most of these things are dangerous if not used in the correct manner. But what I want to make very clear here is Aldi Cup as a carbon mate is illegal in South Africa. It is no longer produced in the country and it was banned 10 years ago. So if it's getting into the country, it's coming in illegally and it's not registered with the Department of Agriculture as a pesticide that may be used in the country for any application whatsoever. Organophosphates, on the other hand, are registered and permitted in this country as in many, many other countries in the world under specific conditions uh, and used by specific uh, pra uh, practitioners that are able to use these products in the correct manner. And that's the differentiation I really want to make here. So, so and, Prof, pardon me, it should concern us then that we're hearing of cases where people have, you know, are said to have consumed Aldeca. Absolutely. It is, it is a highly toxic material and uh, you only need a, about a, a, a tenth of a teaspoon to actually hurt an adult very, very badly and potentially cause death quite quickly. So we mustn't discount the fact that because we found, or the Department of Health found organophosphates in the, in the uh, autopsy results of these uh, tragically, ch tragic children who died from this uh, uh, pesticide, we mustn't discount the fact that Alicol is still out there. It is still extremely toxic. And uh, I, would, I would hate to have the focus removed from Aldecol and only focused on organophosphates because the, the one and a half kilograms of Aldecol that was confiscated from a mall in Johannesburg is extremely, extremely concerning. You should be able to smell that these organophosphates are in the product and then avoid eating those products completely if they smell strange. There is no other way of knowing whether an organophosphate is in a food product because you can't see it. You can't necessarily, uh, well, you could probably taste it if it smells bad, but by that time, you might have already ingested some of it. And depending on the concentration that you are ingesting, it might actually already be hurting you and causing illness. So, Prof, how then do, do we know, um, you know, if it's food poisoning or poisoning? Well, it, it, it's a little bit of a gray area. This, you know, foodborne disease is usually caused by microorganisms of various kinds, including bacteria, viruses, fungi, their products, their toxins that they might produce in food. But we also understand that chemical contamination can also be regarded as foodborne disease. The difference here is that this chemical should never 
have been in the environment of the food. It should never have been stored or used in any way in the environment. So this is more what we would call an adulteration of food. In other words, something that should never have been there, but for this illegal reason, it is there. And therefore, we regard it more as an adulteration of food rather than true food poisoning. Now, when it comes then to, of course, some of those who are concerned, who are saying that, um, you know, tonight, like Nkose Kona, for example, who says, I think they use these blends of pesticides to repel rodents in their warehouses. And this is an indictment uh, to the Department of Health to deploy their health inspectors to, to both spaza shops and the warehouses. Some are saying that um, if you are using this to repel rodents, you, you should also be taught how to do this correctly. Yes, you should, but you shouldn't be using it in the first place to repel rodents. You shouldn't be using any of these chemicals to kill any rodents. There are rodents products that are available in supermarkets. And it is up to the government to ensure that these products are not available in anywhere in South Africa without any license trained personnel who's going to use them in appropriate way in the agricultural environment and that's it and who's responsible for that that is the government if they know that that lady said to us or that the people in the area they were using these they were telling them they were using certain chemicals to kill the rodents so why didn't they investigate it further last year and clean up the street then. This is how ANC works. All everybody they put in ANC does this stuff. This stuff. Yeah? And DA is involved in here. The Minister of Agriculture is John. John van Steyhuizen is the Minister of Agriculture. Where is he? You ask. Ask the same question. Where is he? In a domestic environment, including a small sponsor shop. We must also just be clear that the environmental health practitioners cannot be there every single day or, if, or once a week or even once a month. So they will inspect and then uh, according to regulation 638, which is your basic food hygiene, transportation and storage regulation. And if they see things are looking good, then they will uh, issue the so-called certificate of acceptability. But then the onus remains on the owner of the store to keep uh, aware and, and to comply with all the best food safety practices revolving around manufacturing of food, packing of food, even repacking if they buy food in bulk and then repack it into smaller packs. First of all, those smaller packs will probably be unlabeled. But if they are going to be contaminated because there's an illegal pesticide in the environment, then there is a very little that what the environmental health practitioner can do at that point in time. The only thing they can do is investigate together with the police and have a concerted effort to cut this the head of the snake off completely of this supply chain so they have to go back and find out how is these how are these products getting into these domestic environments and stop that from happening and have to go back and look at how does algae algae carb which is an illegal pesticide get into the country in the first place and cut that supply chain off completely. And yeah, so that's very important that they actually provide, I feel like they need to provide the South African uh, community, in that community, the number they need to ring. If you visit a spaza shop in that community, you find that it smells horrible, things aren't fresh, you need to ring be able to call a number and to make a complaint. Where are the consumer protection officers? And then there needs to be consistent checking and monitoring that these supply chains remain 
cut off and closed. Otherwise, this may pop up again in a year or two or however long it may take. So, Prof, um, you know, for parents and even teachers at school who've had to deal with some of these cases, so if a child has consumed, um, you know, this, this, this substance, some parents um, or teachers will rush or even adults to give the child milk. So, firstly, yes. let's talk about what symptoms to look out for and what do you need to do immediately to try and assist? Well, uh, I'm not a toxicologist, so in terms of treatment, I know that atropine works extremely well. So, but by that time, you actually have to get the child to a healthcare facility because they are the only ones who can administer atropine. So the symptoms to look out for for this type of chemical poisoning is nausea, diarrhea, excessive vomiting and foaming of the mouth and any blue, turning blue because that means that oxygen is cut off from the system. Uh, there is a point, I have to say, of no return. If the child gets to the healthcare facility too late, atropine can be administered, but it most likely will not help if the nervous system has started to shut down. So it's absolutely vital that if a child is complaining of these symptoms and is starting to vomit, that that child is taken to hospital immediately, as fast as possible, so that the medical doctors can administer an atropine or any other treatment that they might feel is appropriate for those particular symptoms. And uh, Prof, uh, some of the viewers are asking the difference between a best before and sell by date on, on the labeling of, 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 of foods, of, of foods so, rather. Uh, that, that too is a, is a very, very good question. The sell by date is a date that the retailer places on a package of food as to the time that they wish that product to be sold and off the shelves. The use by date and best before dates are the important ones that consumers must take note of. The use by date is about food safety. In other words, you'll typically find a use by date on perishable products because we know that they go, uh, that they might become unsafe quite quickly because they are perishable. They don't have a long shelf life in the refrigerator. The best before date, on the other hand, is about food quality. It's not about safety. So if a product has exceeded its best before date, it does not mean that it suddenly has become unsafe for human consumption. It's just not at its peak quality any longer. And that's important because the use by date is the one that you really want to keep an eye on. But having said all of that, this intoxication has nothing to do with use by dates or best before dates. Because a product that is manufactured under the correct environment will have had a use by date and best before date de uh, determined via various challenge tests and things that laboratories do normally when you want to have a product or, or, or a food product manufactured. You need to understand its shelf life, when can it spoil, when can it become unsafe, etc. And those best before dates and use by dates are being determined accordingly. Okay. And intoxication of this nature has absolutely nothing to do with those dates because that chemical should never have been there in the first place. Mm. Yes, thank you guys. So that is the final for this episode. So this one is not going to end here. So we're going to follow on this story until we until I can report to you whether they found the source of this chemical. I'm still going to be looking at and keeping an eye on it because it is important that they find the source of these chemicals. Um, they shut it down because there, more people will die if they don't do it. If they can't find it, then yeah, I don't know. It's horrible. So they must uh, be looking for it everywhere to find it this chemical and community you south africans are very smart anyway you a lot of these things that you pick up the authority the anc people they don't even know you guys you tell them where to look look at chidima yeah look at that that was you the south africans that went and say look at this one she's illegal 
And so you probably need to be keeping an eye on these things, uh, reporting to the police. If you see anything, you hear anything uh, about where these illegals get their product from, these um, chemicals that are not, not supposed to be in the shops that are using, they're using them to, um, for other reason other than what they intended to be used for. So it is your responsibility as a citizen to make sure your community, is, you keep your community safe. This is keep community safe. It's about reporting. So you all play a part to make South Africa safe and great again. Thank you for listening. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and press the like and a bell so you know when I post a new video. Have a lovely night. Bye for now.